بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ونصلي ونسلم صلاة وتسليم من يليقان بمقام أمير الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه we begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We love him and we beseech his help. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides and can misguide. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides and can guide. And we testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. So we spoke about ihsan. And we spoke about controlling our anger. And we spoke about being merciful towards others. And we spoke about consistently remembering, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in istighfar. But all of these come down to remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because when you control your anger, I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I'm being merciful towards someone, I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you recite the Quran, when you make istighfar, when you say Allahu Akbar or subhanallah, you're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so... There is a saying where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it says that if you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through dhikr, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember you. And if you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through dhikr, more than you sit there and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, I want this, oh Allah, give me this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more than you want and you ask. So it's more about remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is automatically rewarding you without you having to ask for something specific because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows what you want. And so moving forward, now we're going to talk about a very common topic that we come across and that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الظُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ And so, the reality of the situation is that some of us, although we enter Ramadan, some of us, although we know that the shayateen are locked, so although that we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive us, and He is waiting for us just to simply seek forgiveness for Him, we still sometimes sit there and we're like, but I did too much. We did too much. I felt too much. I've, I've said too much. I've, you know, I've indulged myself too much. And the reality is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, do not transgress against yourselves because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all the sins that you can possibly think about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive anything and everything except one thing. And that is simply if you have upset someone else and they don't and you don't seek their forgiveness and they don't forgive you, then you'll be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, and there will only be one thing between you getting into Jannah, and that would be simply the person that you have upset to forgive you. So you should seek also forgiveness from your friends and your colleagues and your parents and your siblings, because that you don't have anybody holding anything against you. And so that we can attain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through having no debts on us on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are forgiven. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who follow the Quran and Sunnah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who reach the Laylatul Qadr. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah to for those. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين and please follow us on ITV so that you can watch the next episode جزاك الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته